Good morning and welcome to our Daily Word and Prayer. My name is Tom Short, so glad to have you along today as we get in the Word of God, talk about it, pray about it, and allow it to transform our lives. Say, have you ever wondered, why hasn't Christ come back yet? I mean, we're in 2 Peter where people mock us, say, well, where's where's his coming? He's been saying for a long time he's going to do this. They ask us that. Have you ever wondered? Well, that's what we're going to answer in today's message. So welcome. I'm glad you're along as we'll be together for a few minutes looking into the Word of God. Let's start with 2 Peter chapter 2, excuse me, chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Know this first of all, Peter says, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? That's the question. Then they'll argue for it's ever since the beginning of creation, everything's continued just as it is. But they're asking, where's the promise of his coming? Others have said this. <clears throat> Maybe you, like me, kind of thought Jesus was going to come back a while ago, and you've been a little disappointed. And you've wondered, why haven't things quite worked out the way you thought they were? Well, the good news is he's clo- his return now is closer than when we first believed. Each day that goes on, Romans tells us, Romans 14, I believe it is, each day that goes on, the return of Christ is that much closer. So we're excited. We're looking forward to that second coming. But there's something holding it back. So let's. how do we think about this delay in the coming of Christ? Well, Peter writes and he tells us this. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. So it's important to think about this for a minute. This verse has been misused so often to explain that the creation was was not literal days. And when someone says that, see, with the Lord a day is a thousand years, a thousand years a day, that's not what it says. It says it's like a thousand. In other words, time doesn't matter to God. Time doesn't, God is, God is not, God is patient, but it, we're the ones who need to be patient. But with God, it's like a day, okay, a thousand years, okay, it's no big difference. So this is talking about we need to get into the mindset of God. Now, why is God patient? Why is with why, why is with God, excuse me, why is with God this delay? Because he's patient. It says here, the Lord isn't slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. This is why Christ is not back yet. This is why we have this apparent delay. There are still more people to be saved. That's what it comes down to. He's not slow about his promise. He's not falling asleep. He's not forgotten about us. He's not delaying improperly. He's got a purpose. Everything God does is with a purpose. God doesn't waste his time. God doesn't waste anything. He has a purpose. The purpose in this apparent delay, and it is no real delay, God's patient. He's waiting. He's got things worked out. But the reason for this apparent delay is because he wants all people to come to repentance. He wants all people to be saved. There's still so many people who aren't. And I believe that when that last person, God knows who's in and who's not. God knows who is going to be his and who won't be. And I believe when that when that last person comes to Christ, that last person is saved and this kingdom is full. That's when he'll come back. So, there's another verse here. Peter goes on just a couple verses later, and he says this. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, remember he'd been talking several times, three or four times here. He said the world will be destroyed by fire, intense heat. We don't know what this will be. Maybe it will be like the raining down of fire and brimstone as happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, and the remains are still there today. Of this destructive, what was once a fertile valley is now just a destroyed, barren wasteland filled with sulfur, which is brimstone. Perhaps it'll be that. Perhaps it'll be a nuclear war of some sort, a nuclear destruction. 
for the first time in the history of the world, of course, in our lifetime, the world could be destroyed by intense heat and the melting of elements and these words described in the Bible. But whatever it is, we're, what we're to think about is since it's going to end that way, what sort of people ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God? So you and I are to live in light, in light of the fact that everything around us will someday be gone. It's here now. We need to be stewards of it, take care of it. Some things, of course, we can enjoy. But remember, if you can see it, it's going to be gone someday. All that is seen is temporal. What is eternal, the Word of God, God Himself, the souls of people, these things will last forever. They can't be seen. But what can be seen will someday be gone, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. So, my friend, what sort of person ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness? Well, that's exactly it. The, the time is way past to be wasting our life and carousing and sin. The time is past for uh, the, the coming of Christ is at hand. The, God is on the move. His kingdom is being built. The day is approaching. And yes, be patient. You say it hasn't happened yet. I thought it was going to happen way back in the 80s or the 90s or whenever. Well, Again, with the Lord, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. He's working his plan. What are we to do? We're to look for and we're to have our hopes set on this and we're to hasten this day. We're to help bring it about faster if we can. Rather than say, God, why aren't you bringing things to conclusion? We should ask, is there a role we can play? And Peter seems to imply there is. We are to be hastening the coming of the day of God. Okay, well, if you go back two verses earlier and you say that the reason he's, he's delaying is so that he doesn't want, because he doesn't want any to perish but all to come to repentance, how do we hasten the day of God? Well, maybe we help people come to repentance. What's our role in that? Let's be clear. You and I can't save a person. Only God can save a person. But you and I are the mouthpieces through whom God works. You and I are the vessels through whom he works. Indeed, our sharing of the gospel, our opening our mouth and sharing the message of the gospel, our good works, our loving of people, all of these things help hasten the day of God. Now, to be clear, I do believe our goodness and our kindness softens people's hearts and we live in a time People have a lot of people have hard hearts, and to be good and kind and known for our good deeds is important. But remember, people can't be saved unless they hear the word. They can't be saved unless they hear the word. That's how people get saved. It's been said that Francis of Assisi once said, and I don't, I don't think this is accurate, but preach always, if necessary, use words. Well, to preach, it's always necessary to use words. We can live a, we can be a light, we can be salt, we can shine brightly, we can be a city set on a hill without words, but we can't be, we can't preach the gospel without words because the gospel's information. Of course, there's many ways we can preach the gospel. You can verbally share the gospel with some people. And, and sometimes, you know, we feel inadequate to do that, but be good, get, get good at it, get some training, learn how to do it. We can share the word verbally. We can write things on our social media. This is a great way. Write your testimony on your Facebook page, your Instagram page. Share ways in which God is working in your life. You may not have a huge platform. That doesn't matter. Be faithful with what you have. Be faithful with what God has given you. Allow God to grow that and multiply that. But we get out there by, we do our part, sow the seed. Sow the seed. Put something on your social media, your, your testimony. Share a gospel verse, whatever it may be. You can pass out literature. This is something we used to do years ago, much more. And when I travel to Europe and I see some of the churches growing there in very... Um, area in, in, in Europe and also in India, places that are growing in very non-Christian 
places. They use a lot of literature. They hand out inexpensive tracts or they hand out Christian books or whatever. It's very common. I encourage you to do this. We don't do this much in America anymore. Well, at least post on social media, but use literature. I know I came to Christ because one night I was looking for something to do, and there on my bookshelf was a Bible. I decided to read it. Use literature. That's the knowledge. You can't believe what you don't know. People have to have the knowledge of Christ, and less and less, less and less they're not having, more and more they're not having that in our day and age today. So we advance the gospel. As the gospel goes out, as people are saved, we are hastening the coming of the day of God. But then I'll go even one step further here. And there's one verse in Matthew 24 that I think speaks clearly of the second coming. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. You want to engage, you want to uh, hasten the coming of the day of God? Get behind evan- efforts of world evangelism. Get behind efforts of taking the gospel to the, to the lost. As you support that, maybe become a missionary, pray for them, support financially. However we do that, as this gospel goes to all the peoples of the world, every nation of the world, then the end will come. That's our part. That's something we can do. Father in heaven, we pray today. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we look in our world and we're distressed at things that happen. We're distressed at the rise of evil. We're distressed at the thought of days to come. And so, Lord, we don't want to just be anxious. That doesn't do good. Do we want to pray and act in ways that we can hasten the coming of the day of God? We know this world will be destroyed with intense heat. And so, Lord, we want to be preparing for that next world. We want to be preparing for the new heavens and the new earth where righteousness will dwell. We want to live this day in light of that day. We acknowledge, Lord, there's a day of judgment coming, and we want to live in light of it. And we, want to be, and we know, Lord, the way to be victorious today is to live in light of that day. And so help us to be strong, to be courageous, to live godly lives, to not be dragged down by those around us and give us boldness and courage to advance your gospel, whether it's by social media, whether it's by our words, whether it's by sharing literature, whether it's by prayer, whether it's financial support, whatever it is, that we'd be supporting and helping to advance the gospel. And Father, we know that this could involve um, opposition, but that's okay, Lord, because you're working your plan And if God is for us, who can be against us? We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, how exciting. You and I, the day of the Lord for us will be a day of excitement and victory if we're living for him now. For many people, it'll be a day of distress and destruction. And so let's advance the gospel. Let's do our best, amen? If you're with us today as, uh, for the first time, I'd like to give you a special welcome. We're here every morning. We believe in getting in the Word of God daily. We believe there's, there's power in building bit by bit, day by day into getting the Word of God. And so if you join us, God will be building your life too. Get into His Word. We need to be strong, mighty Christians. We don't overcome just because we think we can outsmart the devil. We overcome by the Word of God and because it's dwelling in us. So to all who are here for the first time today, a special welcome. I hope you do subscribe, join our community, share with your friends. And for those who are here regularly, thanks for coming back. I know you're changing. God will reward your commitment to be here day by day. So you can watch live at 8.30 a.m. or later in the day, you can watch the video or you can even listen to the podcast on the Apple, Spotify, or Google platform. So until until we meet tomorrow, might the Lord bless you, fill you with his peace, make his face shine upon you, give you his grace, might you know you're loved by him. Be strong, be courageous. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.